Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here, and I uh, happen to be in Seattle right now with uh, with family, but I had to interrupt my, my little time away to bring you an important story for our movement. This is really, um, you know, there's, there are not a lot of cases that I really just want to come out and make a video about like this, but this is a, a really important one that crosses a lot of issue lines uh, about justice and, and uh, freedom and firearms rights and custody battles and the state being involved in marriage and divorce in some really, really sick, disastrous ways. So here we have one of the terrible consequences of this in the case of Deanna Jo. Now, uh, I was really uh, honored to be included in a conversation with a number of people who are organizing for her support. Uh, if you want to stand up for an activist who's in trouble, uh, please share this video right now. I'm going to give you the whole story here and let you know what you can do to help. So this was started by James Gresset, I believe, or Grisset. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but I got to say, James, thank you so much for putting this together and thank you for your $1,000 contribution to start this off. This is on fundedjustice.com. Of course, the link is wherever Facebook puts it. And... The title is Free Deanna Joe, New York City, Good Victim of a Bad Law. And uh, the byline here, Deanna Joe, loving mother of two adorable boys, veteran activist and friend in liberty, was arrested in New York City on November 11 while traveling from Texas when her self-defense handgun was discovered in her vehicle. Please help us free her from Rikers. So she's still in jail right now, and uh, the target is uh, a $25,000 goal. And that's for the general legal defense. And that's, that's really, uh, unfortunately, a, a sad, small, uh, low estimate on what this whole thing is going to cost. Um, but this is, the, you know, if, if I may rant uh, a little sidebar here before I get to tell you the story. I mean, I, I look at stories like this and it's just, it's so frustrating. And, I, and I'm tempted to say, you know what, let's, you know, let's just work on the big picture. But when you see someone suffering, you know, it's, it's really impossible to, um, to turn away. And I just hope that for the people who, uh, who are going to get involved, who are going to help out with this case, that, that we see some way to, to make a bigger point out of this. And not only is, is gun control a terribly dangerous, violent policy that rips families apart, but getting married under government, having a government marriage license. And I know there's some, you know, everybody's got their different considerations and the government has a monopoly on so many things and it makes it hard to say, well, we're going to be un, we're going to be married, uh, for ourselves, but we're not going to be government married, you know, we're not going to get the, the government license, the permission from the government. And remember, the, uh, you know, the, the whole marriage license racket started as, as government's way to keep interracial marriage from happening. Yeah, so like, just, just you know, look at the origin of this. And, you know, gun control, even the origins of gun control. It was never about controlling guns, because gun control is, is a... It's an impossibility. People who say they want gun control really are saying that they want government to be the only ones that have the guns and to be able to, you know, impose that on other people. So here's the story. Two beautiful little boys are wondering where their mother is after the family of three traveled across the country from Texas to New York City so the children could spend time with their estranged father. Deanna Jo is a responsible mother and a veteran with military clearances and a Texas license to carry. Concerned primarily with her children's safety and posing no threat to any other person, Deanna Jo arrived at her destination where her estranged husband took the children into his house, then contacted police who found her self-defense handgun in her vehicle. I mean, like, already you're just like, look at the story, like, what the, how the hell does this happen in the first place? And according to some accounts, this is a part of a pattern of violent abuse from the father in this case. And despite the fact that Deanna went all the way, or at least more than halfway across the country in order to, uh, to get her boys to him, this is what he did. So I, I, I just, you know, it, it, you're never going to have justice for false accusations under a system that rewards false accusations, under a system that depends uh, upon false accusations, making accusers feel comfortable coming forward. And there's no accountability, you know, and, and, and I, 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 
I, I, I, I, let's have a law. There ought to be a law. <laughs> so that's like my, uh, my, my initial response. There ought to be a law that says you can sue someone when they falsely, falsely accuse you of shit in, in order to be able to, to get damaged for that. But that, that's not possible in a system like we have today. And I don't just mean the, the system. I mean, you know, the, the, the mentality in society that, that, uh, that, that just that, that encourages uh, punishment, you know, because we don't have a criminal justice system in America. That's what they call their punishment system. That's what it's about. It's not about justice. Justice would be making victims whole. The criminal justice system in the, in the United States is about punishing people. So anyway, back to the story here. Um, no mother should be forced to leave behind her best means of self-defense, yet the city of New York sends a clear message. We do not care about your constitutional rights or your personal safety. And the only people who have guns here are criminals. Now, Deanna Jo sits in a cage at Rikers Island, stripped of her remaining rights and incarcerated, and her children, by all accounts of their relationship with their father, are now in a place where they are unwanted and unloved. Because of this dynamic, Child Protective Services may be involved. But now, there ought to be a law against Child Protective Services being allowed to exist. Because they don't protect children. No, they... they, they steal children from their parents in order to hand them over to rapists, murderers, and abusers who are sponsored by the United States government. So, uh, because of this dynamic, Child Protective Services may be involved. She needs to return to them so they can be with their mother. The city has told her that her life and the lives of her children are meaningless and that her right to protect them is trivial. We are a group of friends who want to see Deanna Joe reunited with her children as soon as possible. This fund is to help us do that, plus assist with the legal battle to come. So that was what I was getting at earlier, is that the defense fund that they're looking for, this $25,000, is uh, a big part of this is just to get her out of jail right now. There's, a, of course, a ridiculous bail set. And I, I, it just, um, I, I, was, I, was, I was involved in this conversation on Facebook. And again, Thank you for including me in this so that I had the opportunity to at least, you know, do something to help, like, make this video. But I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I hear people say, I uh, heard people in this conversation saying that um, they, they, they just want to get her out as soon as possible. Like, they want to uh, either give the money to the government in the court, or they want to give it to a bail bondsman who's going to take, you know, uh, 15%. It used to be 10%. Last time I went to jail, it was 10%. What the hell is this shit? The government uh, bail let you out of jail for money racket. I mean, because that's what it is. It's, kid it's kidnapping for bribery. It's you're kidnapping people for ransom. When you arrest someone for a nonviolent crime, and you put them in jail and say, well, we'll let you go... If you give us money, it's clear that you don't give a fuck about justice. You're just trying to rip us off. It's a racket. It's a scam. It's all. And I'm like, okay, so you want to give money to the bail bondsmen? They're, they're they're part of the racket. They're they're profiteers of the government racket, you know. And I understand that. Yeah, we want to get people out of jail. Like, but but. And you know, I tried this. I don't think this is the answer, but it, it, my, my temptation is to say, Let, let's all go to New York and get arrested for unlawful firearms possession. It will just overwhelm the system, you know? And if people had started doing this a long time ago, you know, they're saying we were not going to put up with this racket at all. You know, you arrest one of us on unjust charges and try to, try to, to, to you know, rip us off to let our friend out of jail. Fuck you, we're going to overwhelm your system. But, you know, I tried. It's hard to get people to stand up. I did four months. Hopefully, uh, D doesn't have to do that. So, I hope you'll support this case. I think it's an important one. The people who are involved in supporting D are doing a great job of being and getting organized as this case requires. They are reaching out to the NRA, to other firearms groups. So, um, I, I hope you'll support them. This is going to be a good effort and hopefully a case that's uh, worth putting a lot of effort into, at least as necessary, to, to seek justice. Because you're never going to find it. You're never going to find total justice, no. Um, and the, the guy who called the police, um, you know, there's a special place in hell for you, Jose. Yeah, there really is. And for all the people who make false accusations and false claims, but especially those who then use violence and get government involved. But uh, James Gresset says he PM'd Larry Sharp. Oh, that's right. Larry Sharp is in New York City. I hope, oh, that's awesome. We're bringing this to Larry's attention. Larry, 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 
please get on this. This is an important one, and it is a great opportunity for you as a gubernatorial candidate in New York to, to raise the firearms issue and, and to show people how it, it tears families apart, that if you're pro-gun control, you're anti-family. How about that? I'm sure that would go well with your campaign. Um, Kelly Stewart, Adam, do you have a link on the story you can share? Well, the link is, is wherever the description is here, so please check that out. Click on the link. Um, all right, got a lot of people watching here. Let's see. Anthony Rizzuto, that place is a hellhole bad place. Yes, Kelly Stewart, yep, kidnapping for bribery. Stephen Stewart, say no to CPS, indeed. And, and by the way, like again, lessons that come out of this. If, if you can avoid it, I know the thing is, it's, oh, I have, I've heard so many stories, even on this last tour, people who like, well, I, I would not have gotten government married but for the fact that we needed it for health care, for my job. Because government is pointing guns at everybody saying, no, you can't have health care unless you have a government-approved corporate job with preconditions, blah, 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 all that shit. And so one, you know, if you, if you, if you can get married without getting government permission, don't get government permission. Don't invite government as a third party into a contract of love between two individuals. It is sick, and it, 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 I know it's something some people have to do, have to do, but if you can avoid it, don't do it. And the other thing, have your kids without papers. Now, this is something that anybody can do. There's no legal consideration for an uh, as yet unborn child, and I got to give a mad shout out to Alma Summer and uh, Brian Stith, who have done this now with two children. And shown that it is doable, and it is in many ways much easier than getting a birth certificate for your child and having them on the government rolls and everything else. So, uh, Philippa Hemming, uh, forget bail, she needs an attorney. Yes, they are working on that as well. Christopher Cordova, I've been giving away those books left and right. Awesome, I hope, I hope you're talking about freedom. Caleb, Larry, her name is, yeah, okay, so... Uh, what is the mother's name? Yeah, Larry, if you, if you go to the link, it's all in there, all the details, all the description. And James, as, as you notice in this conversation here, is one of the people taking charge of this. So please contact him if you want to get more involved or find out more. Jonathan Oaks, avoid all government agencies if possible. And uh, I want to say this right. <laughs> Don't tase Norbrithian Phillips, land of the free. Haha, <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Uh, is there anything I can bring that she needs in blocks away from there? I can go and visit and bring a care package. Anthony, I'm sorry I don't have the immediate answer to that question. But again, if you contact James, who is in the comments now, you can get it from him. So please get involved with this case if you can. Share this video. Share the fundedjustice.com story. And I mean, let's get this out. I think, I think this is an important story with a couple at least obvious valuable lessons that would certainly improve the world and America if people were able to learn them. So, peace and love.